Okay, I've duplicated this picture up here. Okay? So rigid body motion equals translation plus rotation. Pure translation plus pure rotation. Okay, next thing you do is you draw the vectors, okay? At each end, at each point. Okay? The actual velocity vector. So for point B, the velocity vector at point B, okay, you actually know it. You actually know the direction because you know how this is rotating, okay, clockwise, A, B. Now point B is also attached to this link A, B, okay. So knowing this angular velocity of A, B, you know the velocity of B right away, which goes down this way, okay? And it makes a right angle with this R direction, okay? That's AB. So, draw this velocity. So this is your VB vector. Now, actually draw it more precisely. Okay. It's going that way, so it's actually going kind of in this direction. Okay. So, VB. For velocity of C, okay, again, since point C is also attached to this CD, okay, and CD is also spinning, okay, so C will follow this direction, okay, so C will go kind of that way, this is my BC, okay, so that's your rigid body motion, okay, so you draw the VB and VC, and that's it, that's a pure translation, okay, since we break down this general rigid body motion into pure translation and pure rotation, now, translation, now, you can take either the translation of using the VB or VC as the pure translation. That is, I can use this point B okay, for the pure translation. So I, I, can, I can make it translate down this way according to VB, okay, and then look at the rotation apart. Or I can use the VC, that is the whole thing, is translating up, okay, and then the rotation. Either one doesn't matter, but usually would take the velocity that is a known quantity. In this case, since omega AB is given, which means that VB can be found quite easily. Okay? So VB is known. Okay? So I'm going to use VB as the translational velocity. So both B and C have the same velocity of VB. So that is pure translation. Okay? Moving this way. The rotational effect, man, would be this guy rotating about a point. But not just any point. It's about the point where you just taken for the pure translation part, which is point B, right? Because I'm using V B. So B now is fixed. Okay, so now it's fixed. So this thing now is rotating about B. Now, but in what direction? Clockwise or counterclockwise? Now you have to look at this now. VB and C is going kind of this way, right? So VB is going down, BC is going up. So the whole thing is kind of spinning this way. So when this is fixed in space, then the pure rotation would be counterclockwise. So this would be velocity of C relative to B. Okay? So this is your relative velocity of point C and relative to point B. Okay? So this is your omega of B C. Okay? So this is your kin kinematic diagram.
Next step, just write down the equation for this right here. So V or ink. Okay. So for point C, okay, point C is sort of a particular interest here. Right? So just write down the vectors for point C. So V C vector equals the V vector plus V C slash V vector. Okay? Which is consistent with the relative velocity equation that I have developed um, earlier. Okay? So now you have this equation. So the next step would be you either solve for this equation directly, which is a vector equation, okay? So solve for it, okay, and split it into the i and j component if you like, okay? Solve directly, okay? Or you can solve for it graphically. By drawing the vector loop for these three vectors right here, VC equals VB plus that. So, let's draw it here. VC, duplicate it here. So that's my VC vector going up this way equals VB plus VC slash V. Okay, so just draw VB back to the original okay, starting point. So it goes VB going kind of this way. That's my VB plus this vector, which is this vector, which goes up this way. So this is my VC slash V. Okay? Pay attention to the arrow. Okay? VC, arrowhead goes this way. And then VB, okay, going down this way. You must follow this vector right here plus keep going, right? So, head to tail, that's the third vector, VC slash V. Okay? So, this forms a closed vector loop. Okay? So, this means that from here to here, okay, following this VC route is the same as following this second route. Okay? VB plus VC slash V. Okay, so now they establish this vector loop. I can call this alpha, this beta angle, and then theta angle. So, by using a property of a triangle, I can actually use sine rule. Okay? Sine rule tells me we see the magnitude of VC over sine of the opposite angle. So VC is here, the opposite angle of C is beta. So sine of beta equals VB divided by sine of beta equals VC slash V, the magnitude divided by sine of alpha. Okay? So, this sign rule actually gives you three equations. One equation, two equations, three equations. Okay, so you can use any combination to help you solve for whatever I'm known that you're trying to solve for. Okay, so either solve for this equation directly, right, by using the i, j, and k, or graphically, right? So in either case, this is the equation that the analysis is based on. Okay. And in the end, you apply finally this equation, mega cross r. Okay? So that's the definition of linear velocity okay, in relation to the angular velocity. Okay? So you can apply that for each bridge about it, each link, okay, if you like. Okay, so this is the general solution procedure. Next, let's look at example.